Um, welcome to our service today and to the party. The children and young people will be leading this morning. We've chosen the songs and the written praise. We hope you enjoy your time with us and learn more about Jesus and how he wants us to live our lives. Lauren will now give us some Bible verses. As we spend time in God's presence, let's reflect on some verses from the Bible. In Psalm 34, 1 to 5, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. We magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. Dear God, thank you for being with us in all our times of trouble. Thank you for your unchanging presence in our lives, constant through life storms. Please help us to turn to you in prayer, trusting that you will answer us. Even though at many times we may not understand what is happening around us and we are fearful, help us to rest in the knowledge that you will continue to sustain us. We look to you, God, and we praise you. Amen. So I'm just going to come and give you the notices this morning. So first of all, um, to say that Amanda has COVID. She's been very unwell. Um, and if anybody is willing to make her a meal or to walk the dogs, please um, could they see one of us afterwards as she still does need some help. Um, second thing is it's Messy Church uh, next Sunday. So we look forward to having lots of you there at four o'clock. Um, and also, we're always looking for people to come and have a chat to um, the parents and just generally have the fun that we have doing things with the children. Um, it is First Fruit Sunday today. Brian will be talking to us uh, more about that later. Um, I think that's about all I can think of at the moment. We've also got Isabella ill, so we've got no warden, so we really are... Um, um, uh, doing very well today, so please bear with us. Okay, and David's going to continue now leading our service. We're now going to sing our first song, We Want to See Jesus Lifted High. So let's make a good noise and really lift Jesus high with our voices. Please stand. <laughs> We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that all my might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, that all my might see the truth and know. All my might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see. We want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward, little by little taking ground. Every power a powerful weapon, strongholds come. Tumbling down and down and down and down and We want to see Jesus lifted high A banner that flies across this land That all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven We want to see Jesus lifted high A banner that flies across this land 
that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lift and tie. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lift and tie. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lift and tie. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lift and tie. Right, um, please sit down. So we're going to have our confession now, and we're going to do it in a, a slightly different way to the way that we usually do it. And um, I'd like you this time, for the first time perhaps, not to close your eyes because you need to watch me. We're going to do some actions with our confession. So you'll need to just watch me and copy me. So the first action that you need to make is a fist. And then you can join in with me with the words on the screen. We are sorry for the times we have got angry with other people. We are sorry for the times we have blamed others and seen things wrong in others without recognizing how much is also wrong in us. We are sorry for the times we have kept things selfishly to ourselves and not been prepared to give to those who need our help. We are sorry for the foolish words we have spoken which hurt other people. We are sorry that we have deliberately chosen not to see the good things we could have done to help other people. We are sorry for the times we have not listened to the cries of those who are poor or who suffer injustice. So hold out your hand with your palm upward as if you are waiting to receive something. Jesus said, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. So we bring all that we are to Jesus, all our sins and our failure to love. Thank you that you died for us so that we might be forgiven and start a new life in the power of your Holy Spirit. And as a way of remembering that it is through the cross that our sins are forgiven, now trace the shape of the cross with the index finger of your other hand across the palm. Amen. We're now going to see how accurate your senses of smell are. We're going to need three volunteers. Who's going to come and be a volunteer? Florence, come on then. Florence is going to come. Belinda's going to come. Anyone else want to come and be a volunteer? Oh, come on. Fantastic. What's your name? Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Right, come and sit down. Now, I have got six bags over here and they have all got something in that smell so I'm going to blindfold these three people and then I'm going to ask them if they know what the smell is so let's see I wonder if we could have the roving mic do you think please Chris thank you right you've got to make sure you can't see Right, make sure you can't see a thing. You can't, well done, Elia. Do you want to take your glasses off, Florence, just in case? Hope I don't go and ruin anybody's eye makeup that they've spent hours doing this morning or something 
like that. Right, let's take the first one. They all need a bit of fiddling with first. They can't see it, but you might be able to. Right, what do you think this is? Any idea? It smells like chicken. It smells like chicken. Chicken. Chicken? Chicken. They think it's chicken. It's cat food! Oh. <laughs> it might be chicken cat food, but it's still cat food. Oh, maybe, just maybe, there is chicken in cat food then. <laughs> Kind of thought there might not be. Right. I think I'm going to need a help. Lauren, could you come and help me? Could you come and open the, the things that are in there? Some of them need an open first. Right, they should get this one. I'm sure you all saw it. Right, what does that smell like? Dog food. She thinks it's dog food this time. Okay. <laughs> Cut food. Cat food, ooh. Dog food. <laughs> oh, wrong, it's Marmite. <laughs> You're obviously not Marmite lovers like I am. Brilliant, I can stick that in there. Right, okay. Now let's see, I probably didn't need the bags actually. Let's see, what's this? Tea. Tea, okay. Coffee. 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 Yes, one right, one out of three. Well done. Hmm. This is the tiniest bit harder. This one, just the tiniest bit harder. Uh, you can give me a general name for it. Smells like flowers. Smells like flowers, good guess. Herbs, good guess. Seasoning. Seasoning. Yeah, they all did very well. It's actually rosemary. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. Do you know, there's something over here that is smelling so badly, I think they're going to get it straight away because I could smell it all the while I was all round there. vinegar it's garlic yeah garlic are you all right Ilya oh don't say you're peeping right we have it's coming off oh no let me just tie you out got one more to do you're all doing so well I wonder if anyone can guess what our story is about today after doing all these smelly things right that's what I'm going to do with this one. Right. What's that? Perfume, Perfume you think? Um, diffuser? Diffuser. Okay, yeah. Air freshener. You know what? They're all quite close, aren't they? It's perfume. Right, you can take your blindfolds off now. <laughs> it's perfume. Well done. Was it hard? Very hard. It's, very yeah. hard. it's, very hard. it's harder than you think, isn't it? Should we give them all a round of applause? Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Florence. Okay. So I wonder if you can guess what our story is going to be about today then. 
to do with, that was to do with smelling, wasn't it? Anybody got any idea about our story today? Well, it's about the lady who poured oil on Jesus' feet. So before we have our talk, we're going to have a reading. So I think Carla and Janelle are going to come and do our reading. Six days before the Passover, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Beth Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard anointed Jesus' feet and wiped with them with her hair. The house was filled with the, fra with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Ar Aristocrat, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for the 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said, this is not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common proofs and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She brought it so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. You always have Paul with you, but you do not always have me. Thank you very much, Carla and Janelle. So to anoint somebody is to put oil or I've got something here, a, a lotion that looks like oil, um, and it's probably got a lovely smell to it. Um, on their hands, head, feet, shoulders. And in Jesus' time, the Israelites would anoint the person who was going to be the next king. In today's story, Jesus was at a party, which is why we hope we've got a bit of a party theme going on here. And Martha was so pleased that Jesus had raised her brother Lazarus from the dead that she threw a party for Jesus. Whilst he was there, another woman, Mary, took some perfume, like oil, and poured it onto Jesus' feet. She then cleaned his feet with the oil. She was willing to use expensive oil on the one that she believed was the Messiah. Can anyone remember somebody else who bought expensive oil to Jesus at the beginning of his life? I can hear some people shout a bit louder. Yes, thank you, the three wise men. Definitely they bought gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. The, um, so at the end of his life now, Mary pours perfume on him. It was a wonderful gesture and probably again her way of thanking Jesus for healing Lazarus. Jesus was thankful for her gift and told her, but Judas wasn't very happy, was he? He thought it was a waste of money. The money spent on it should have been given to the poor. But Jesus reminded everyone that he was worth more than money. What can we learn from this passage? To pour perfume on Amanda's feet? I'm sure she'd like it, but no, that isn't what the story is about. What it means is that nothing and no one is more important than Jesus. All our favorite things, all the money we have at the end of the day is not just important, just not important. The only thing worth living for and pursuing is Jesus. How do you show that he's important to you? Do you spend time with him? Do you read his word? Do you pray? Do you thank him for your help? Let's pray now. Dear God, you are worth more than riches. Help us always to put you first in our lives. Thank you for loving us. 
Amen. And we're now going to have another one of those kind of party-ish songs. Uh, we're going to sing Shine, Jesus, Shine. So please stand. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Place, Spirit, place. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let the be Lord. Lord, I come to your awesome presence From the shadows into your radiance By the blood I may enter your brightness Shine me, try me, consume my darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Place, Spirit, place. Set our hearts on fire. With grace and mercy, send forth your word, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Spirit, hear me, our lives tell a story. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Place, Spirit, place. Set our hearts on fire. With grace and mercy, send forth your word and let the be light. Please sit down. First thing I want to do is to uh, announce the bands of marriage uh, between Emma Marie Cooper and Leo Michael Watson. I believe they may be here. Great to see you. Great. God bless you. Uh, I published the bands of marriage between Emma Marie Cooper and Leo Michael Watson. Uh, of uh, this parish um, to be married at Holy Trinity Ashford in the Water, Bakewell, due to their uh, qualifying connection there. And this is the first time of uh, asking if any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other. You're to declare it. But uh, we're going to pray for you right now. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for Emma. And Leo, for the way that you've led them together, 
the way that you've put their paths so that they should come together and form this wonderful family. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would bless them as they prepare for their marriage and as they prepare for their wedding. May they grow together in love. May your love anoint them day by day. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, Lord, there please. are activities for the children to do at this table if they'd like to come forward. Okay. Suddenly heard a disembodied voice coming. <laughs> I didn't know where this came from. Okay. Well, there were two... If I can get my tablet uh, up and running. There we go. There were two men shipwrecked on a small island. Once they got to the beach, one of them started screaming, We're going to die! We're going to die! There's no food, no water. We're going to die! The second man was propped up against a palm tree and acted so calmly it drove the first man crazy. Don't you understand, he said, we're going to die. The second man replied, no, you don't understand. I make 50,000 pounds a week. The first man looked at him quite stunned and asked, what difference does that make? Don't you understand? We're on an island with no food or water. We're going to die. He got an Oscar for overacting. The second man answered, Look, I make 50,000 a week and I tithe. I give 10% to my church. 10% on that 50,000 a week? Hmm. Have no fear. My vicar will find me. Sadly, that's the way a lot of people think of the church. It's certainly true. You can spend 50 weeks of the year talking about spiritual life, talking about the fellowship, giving to the needy, supporting Afghan and Ukrainian refugees, opening our homes to the homeless and opening our hands to the hungry. But if we mention giving to the church in one or maybe two weeks of the year, then suddenly the church is only after your money. Today is First Fruit Sunday, a day reminiscent of the Jewish festival of First Fruits when Jewish people celebrate harvest. It was inaugurated in a similar way to American Thanksgiving, after the first harvest in a promised land. It's held in the early spring, at the beginning of the grain harvest on the third day after Passover. It's a time of thanksgiving for God's provision. The people were to bring a sheaf of grain to the priest and a burnt offering, meal offering and drink offering were also required. Through our time of Lent, we've thought about God's generosity and I hope reconsidered our own. Last week, we thought about the prodigal son who returned home. We discovered that the word prodigal means extravagantly wasteful. And of course, this young man did waste his inheritance in the far off land. But we also learned that his father could match his extravagance with the extravagance of his welcoming love. Certainly, the older brother thought the welcome was not only extravagant, but wasteful, wasted on this son. Well, today, Ruth has read and told us of the story of what I would call the prodigal woman, a woman who's accused of being extravagantly wasteful. The prodigal son could hardly have been accused of love in what he did. However, what Mary did was out of total, unequivocal, unbounded love for Jesus. Her heart has been touched 
and her motives are the best. Now, it has to be said that I'm not the best person to pronounce on extravagance. I hope I'm not particularly mean or a cheapskate, but I've discovered over the years that I just find waste very difficult. And so I find also extravagance tough. And I can imagine my family saying, he might be generous sometimes, but extravagant? He's the one who checks the smart meter. He's the one who turns the lights off and the heating down. He's the one who cuts tablets of soap in half so that they last longer. It does work, believe me. He's the one who's been known to reuse Christmas wrapping paper and to keep old nails and screws just in case they're needed one day. Extravagant? Brian? I content myself with the fact that right now there are a number of wives who are digging their husbands in the ribs because I know of quite a lot of men who do precisely that. Someone nodding here. Mary and Martha were overjoyed. That's an understatement. They were overwhelmed with the raising to life of their brother Lazarus by Jesus. They threw a party for Jesus and his friends. And while they were all reclining lengthways at the meal at the low table, Mary did this unspeakably extravagant thing of anointing Jesus' feet with very expensive perfume. It was very expensive. Judas did a quick estimate of 300 denarii. A denarius was the amount that a working, an average working man would earn in a day. So we're getting on for a year's salary. And through this, Mary expressed her unbridled love for Jesus. And the eyewitnesses there include this wonderful little detail that the whole house was filled with the scent of the perfume. It must have been amazing. A bit like the sort of scent that's uh, wafting around the church right now after, after our demonstration that we had from Ruth. So there's the hostess of the party at Jesus' feet, wiping his feet with the perfume and drying them with her hair. And that's not to minimise in any way what Martha did. Martha did a wonderful thing too, throwing this party. And you can imagine from the conversation that happened uh, uh, sometime earlier, uh, how that um, Martha would be extravagant in the way that she would present this meal. So she's not being left out. But while Mary takes this perfume to Jesus' feet, the Brian reeds among them were so embarrassed and they muttered among themselves. What could have been done if she'd sold it instead of wasting it? Judas Iscariot, who was the treasurer of the group, and treasurers have to be so careful about this, Judas gave voice to their mutterings. Now every day, every week, is a time for generous giving. As far as this church is concerned, maintaining the care of the fellowship here, keeping this fellowship as a centre of generous support and spiritual sustenance for the community. But there are times like today when extravagance trumps generosity. Prodigal extravagance. For Jesus, out of thanksgiving and sheer love. Mary was extravagant in thanksgiving for her brother's return. You can imagine her heart fairly bursting with thanks for what Jesus had done. She's been trying to think, what on earth can she do to say thank you? A meal is great. And Martha and she must have discussed this, uh, just what they can do that's going to be worthy of uh, Lazarus' return. 
But for Mary, it wasn't really enough for this. That was Martha's department. Then she remembered the jar of perfume she'd been keeping for that day. Perhaps even her own burial in that tomb where her brother had been laid. I know, she thought, I'll use that for Jesus. Love and loyalty for Jesus should never be cold and calculating. As John wrote, we love him because he first loved us. And how did he love us? Totally. To the end. What have you to give thanks for? I know for some of you just to hear that makes your grief at the loss of family during COVID all the more painful. I can't speak to you of being thankful perhaps. Perhaps though there is still something for which you want to give thanks to God. But for others you might have in mind thanksgiving for your preservation so far through COVID and the preservation of your family. Is that something that you want to say thank you to God for? Maybe it's for a friend, or a special event, or something that's happened in your life in the past few months. First fruit, first fruit giving came out of thanksgiving. What do you want to thank God for today? How will you express it? Will you give what some call a love offering to the Lord? Maybe even I can be persuaded to be extravagant for a change. And though extravagant, believe me, it won't be wasteful. Our treasurer and the PCC will ensure that it's carefully used for God's glory and for facilitating service to this community. But for a moment, let's think of a bigger context. This Thanksgiving today is a one-off, one a year that we do. Perhaps now is a time to help us to think of a bigger thank offering, something even more extravagant, prodigal. Perhaps you've realised that God may be calling you to give something more, that involves your whole life. God's church needs, indeed the world, needs more prodigals, more of those who will love Jesus with reckless and extravagant love, those who are touched by the extravagant and reckless love of Jesus for them. Love that sent him to the cross to bear our sins. Can there be any more prodigal giving than that? When I was in my 20s, fresh out of Bible college, I worked for a year in a Debenham store, then called Sopers of Harrow. I was one of three in our department selling floor covering. One of them was a very with it young man called Nigel. He invited us to a party at his parents' home in Earl's Court, no less. His mum and I chatted about what I hoped to do after my time at Sopers. I believe God had called me into the ministry and I hoped to be going to my first church in Jersey in a few weeks. Nigel's mum's verdict was, what a waste. What a waste of a life. I didn't know whether to feel flattered or flattened. She clearly thought that I could do so much more interesting, useful and rewarding things with my life than go into the ministry. But as the years have passed, I've never thought of giving my life to Jesus as a waste. And though I've occasionally wondered if I could be more useful elsewhere, in other ways for Jesus, I have to say that I have never regretted giving my career to him 
as well as my life. I just made a mention to inspire people. I first sensed God's call to his work when I was 13. I came to Jesus, uh, gave, gave my life to Jesus and received him as my saviour and lord when I was 11. But um, by the time I was about 13, I started to get this nagging feeling in the back of my mind. Is God calling me to ministry or mission field or something like that? And that gradually crystallized over the coming two or three years uh, as, as I heard God's call get clearer and clearer. It may be that God may be calling someone here into some form of ministry. In my first fruits envelope that I put in, uh, in there, uh, in the first service, I've actually written three things I give thanks for. The preservation of my loved ones through COVID. 50 years, it is just that, of ministry. And just a bit over 60 years since I received Jesus into my life as my Saviour and Lord. 60 years of a, a faithful Lord who's never failed or forsaken me. Is the ground in front of the cross a place for half measures and tepid love? Hardly. Faced by Christ's outpoured prodigal love, we're called to reflect on the quality of our love and our service to him. Does your life belong to him? Do you want to serve him with all your heart, soul, mind and strength? Maybe there's someone here who's thinking of entering some form of Christian service. If you think that there's some sort of seed going on, growing in your life about that, then explore it further. Go for it. Talk about it to someone who can help you. It'll be tough. I'll tell you, it'll be tough. But let him have your career as well as your life in service for him. Sometimes people feel Jesus can't do much with what I have to offer him. But you'd be amazed at what he can do with just five loaves and two fishes worth of a life. Bring it all to him out of thanksgiving. After all, you're wonderfully made by him and wonderfully bought by him too. You're his twice over. Ruth's going to lead us in our next part as she shares a way that we can share the thanksgiving and our gratitude of our hearts. Thank you. So um, some of the children, whilst they've been sitting over here, have been thinking of ways and th that they are thankful to God. I don't know whether any of them would, anyone, Belinda, would any of them like to share one of the, some of their thoughts about being thankful? I've just sort of thrown it at them a bit. Anybody like to read out one of the things they said for, that they were thankful for? Janelle? Janelle's come in. I am thankful for my sister because she always makes me laugh and makes me see. Thank you, Janelle. That's lovely to be thankful for your sister, who's such a lovely thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come round with a post-it note, and I've got pens if you need a pen. Some of them are nice gel pens. And um, I'd like you to write on the post-it note something or things that you are thankful for today. And when you've done that, to come and pin it on the board up here. And if you have anything that you would like to put into the first fruits, um, gifts, then do come forward, please, and place it on the altar at the same time. Uh, and while we do that, I think Mike is just going to play. Okay.
Hungry I come to you for I know you're satisfied I am empty but I know your love does not run dry so I wait for you so I wait for you I'm falling on my knees offering all of me Jesus you're all this hearted living to you for your arms are open wide. I've got some pledge forms so if you'd like a pledge I form to come weary, fill in and bring to the front then just raise your hand. Your touch restored my life so I wait for you so I wait Falling on my knees, offering all of me, Jesus, you're all this heart is living for. I'm falling on my knees, offering. Jesus, you're all this heart and living for. Jesus, you're all this heart and living for. Jesus, you're all this heart and living for. So I wait for you, so I wait for you, I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me, Jesus, you're all this heart is living for. I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me, Jesus, you're all this heart and living
I'm sure that uh, as you've been doing your post-it notes, you've sometimes wondered, well, what do I leave out? Um, you know, how can, I, how can I put everything I want to thank God for in, into one post-it note? It's just a few things there that you've been able to itemize. But our God is so gracious. Our God is so merciful. He has given again and again and again beyond anything that we can ever count. And as we, I, we just want to dedicate this Thanksgiving wall, if you like, to the Lord. And uh, as, as we do that, I want to use uh, the prayer of Thanksgiving that uh, we tend to use probably more in the 9.30 service um, but it'll be up on the screen, and um, but I'm going to sh pray a line or two of uh, of, of my own prayer uh, as we come into that. So let's just pray, shall we? Father, we thank you for your outpoured love, a love that knows no bounds, a welcoming love, a giving love, a love that. It goes right the way through our lives and into eternity. Father, we thank you from our, the depths of our hearts. And let's share together in this prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all humankind. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. Give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be sincerely thankful, so that we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. We're now going to sing our next song, What a Beautiful Name. Please stand. Jesus Christ, my King, 
What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever God you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. You have no rival, you have no equal, silence the birth of sin and grave. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the reign to life on again. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. seated. Our young people are now going to give us some prayers. Dear God, we pray for Ukraine and Russia with the hope for an end to this war. We pray for your guidance, safety, and faith of all moving, all families moving to faith, safety in neighboring countries for shelter. Our prayers also go for all those helping Ukraine in many different ways. Our prayer is that you grant them the endurance, endurance and strength to assist in any way possible. Finally, we also pray for the presidents of both Russia and Ukraine together with their negotiating teams. We hope and pray they manage to come soon to an amicable truce, amicable truce so we can see an end to this war. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for our church and our, com and our community. We give you glory for all we're, do 
you're doing in our lives, even in times we can't see or understand your ways. We thank you for the gift of life and the grace of praise you today and forever. We pray that you fill us with your spirit of love and unity and shine your light in us so that we can reflect this light in our community. Strengthen us so that we may strengthen others around us and draw them to our church. We pray for our vicar Amanda and all who lead and care for our church. We ask for wisdom and guidance to live godly lives that will bring honour first to you. We thank you for our church activities and pray that they will succeed that will be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, dear God, um, I pray for the community in Croydon. Um, I pray that you comfort those in need. I pray that you help us to be the ears and to listen to their calls and needs. That you help us to be your feet, to walk beside those who are marginalised in society, to stand behind the hopeless and be a voice for the voiceless. I pray that there's a together I pray that there's a togetherness and unity in the area and provide peace knowing that you are with us. Amen. Amen. Our final song for today will be Yes and Amen. So let's stand. Poured out grace, you brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing. Faithful, you are. Yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me here. Brought me from the ashes, you have broken every curse. Blessed Redeemer, you have set this captive free. Lord, I can't help but sing. Faithful, you are. Says our yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence. Is your faithfulness faithful? You are faithful forever. You will be faithful. You are all your promises are yes and amen. 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 And the blessing. As we take our worship, praise and prayer from this place, 
and into our daily lives. May our lives be sustained through the love of our Heavenly Father. May we feel the presence of our Saviour walking beside us and know the power of the Spirit in both our actions and words. Amen. So before you go, to with party wouldn't be the same without a piece of cake. So some of the children have, and young people have bought some cakes and a few sweets. So please, um, I think the children, you'd like to go and give them out. Would you like to go and hand them around, children? And uh, please um, just enjoy yourselves. So thank you very much for coming. Bye.